guys, Renee from Bargain Hunter Thrift Store here with Tatiana behind the camera. Hello. And Casey to the left, to my right, she's eating lettuce with chicken. So, but anyway, I just got this box back from CGC and it's a new discovery. And I was asking me what are the things that I enjoy. And it's always great to find rare comic books and stuff, but it's even more fun when you kind of discover the history of a comic book that nobody else kind of knew before. So you guys know, and I got notes here because I don't want to make any mistakes because I'm not as expert. Um, this is Dave, David Stevens, one of his very, very first covers. He inked and also drew part of it. Um, it was met by, done by Carl Taylor from Carl Comics. Back, I think they started a project in 1975, 76, it's written down in there. And a comic actually got published in 1978, I believe. So, but I'm gonna double check the dates. So I'm gonna open up the comic books. Oh, actually, you know, let me tell you the history first really quick and then we're gonna open up the books, see what grades we got. Um, I was expecting sevens and eights because they're like a fan sign, they're older, they were just losing the books. So I'm going to be honest, I cheated. I looked online to see what the grades are. And when you guys see those grades, it will blow your mind away. And I'm also going to tell you why I sent in a whole bunch at the same time. But so I printed this out. No, one, I'm tired. It's been a long day. You okay, Nana? Yeah, I'm just stretching my neck. I'm, I printed this out because I wanted to say it word for word. So I don't want to put anybody's... Um, I don't want to put any words in anybody's mouth that they didn't say. So you guys know Dave Stevens. He's super famous for creating the Rocketeer. Uh, he started doing some fan sign stuff in 1975, including for Jack Kirby. Uh, very well known for Betty Boop stuff, and then several different art, different um, characters, plum art illustrations. It says here Betty Boop. He was the first guy who won Comic Con International Russ Manning's po most promising newcomer award in 1982. Got an Ink Pot Award and the Kirby Award for Best Graphic Album in 86. Um, so he did a whole bunch of stuff. He worked on a whole bunch of stuff. Very successful. People really like Dave Stevens stuff. They specialize. This is a book. It's not on any list. Uh, until I found it, nobody even knew it existed. As soon as I did put it. So we had the original find on YouTube. Um, I'm going to try to see if I find the link, how I found them. And I will actually post it in there below. So hopefully I can find it because we do so many videos. But I think I, I think I know where it's at. And as soon as we did it, somebody dug one out and put the same book on eBay, you know, with the whole story for $5,000, which wow. I don't think these books are worth it. Uh, I found 15 of them. The reason I graded them all at the same time, because I believe collectors should know what's out there. So with my 15, now you know this. I got 15 and you get to see what different grades are available. So I was able to contact Carl Taylor, Taylor which was the publisher of Carl Comics at the time. And I asked him how this book happened, and this is what he wrote to me word for word. There's some spelling errors, so I'm going to try to correct it, but uh, by the way, super nice guy. We're actually supposed to meet up to do an interview for this, but it took me like three months to get these back from CGC, actually four months. Um, and I just ended up getting busy and I haven't had time to call him, and now I got him, I'm excited, I want to put him out. So this is what Carl Taylor, Carl Taylor said after I asked him about Stevens. Met Stevens at 1974 or in 1974 at San Diego Comic Con before he was known by anyone. He approached me about collaborating. I penciled up a quick illustration. He inked it in his room and at the con came back. I was so impressed I gave him the cover to this fan sign, which I had with me. He mailed it back to me. I introed him to everyone I knew at the con after I saw how great he inked Bat the Batman sketch. By the way, um, Carl Taylor, if you guys, there's a book out there. And I just purchased it myself, famous comic book pe people at the cons in the 70s and 80s and the 90s and 2000s. So he's one of the people in there. So in the 70s and 80s, he was super involved in the comic book industry. Uh, actually, his nickname is a Black Jack Kirby. So I saw how great he inked the Batman sketch I did. After he went pro 1975, I was showing him some of the interior pages I had pencil. And he wanted to ink this one of those too. So of course, I gave it to him. He also drew up a full page picture thanking everyone who helped him along the way to become a professional. Last but not least, in the biggest letters, he put my name. I still have a copy of it somewhere. So basically for Dave Stevens, this is probably one of his first covers that he inked that actually got put out there. So, and like I said, I'm gonna double check the date cause it's on here and like I haven't opened it, but I believe this got published in 1978. Could be 76, but we'll see. But let's take a look. This is just a cool piece of history, you know, it's not a Superman number one or stuff, but if you like Dave Stevens, you know, this is as early as it gets, all verified by CGC, all graded. One of them came back as qualified because it's actually autographed by Carl Taylor. And you know, when that happens, uh, CGC puts it as qualified. They weren't graded the same. So, 
cost me 400 bucks to get these graded. Uh, Greacher, 15 of them. You guys can see we got 15 of them. Those are all the ones that I found. Now, to be honest, I don't remember if I had 15 or 16. There was one that was really rough. Uh, I thought it was rough and I didn't send it in. But I might have sent it in as the low grade one, so I don't know. But like I said, I was expecting uh, I was expecting all these to come back really, really low grades. So what we're going to do, I'm going to show you the lowest grade first. I thought all these would be 7s and 8s. Here we go. And also what it says, so it was published in 1977. And it says, Carl Taylor Story Art, Carl Taylor and David Stevens cover. And here, so this is the lowest one, which is absolutely crazy to me. This is an 8.5. Oh, that's so cool. Yeah, I'm going to take this one out again. So these were in a lot better condition than I thought. Uh, I didn't even have these pressed. I didn't pay for pressing for these. So, you know, I wonder if you press these, if you can't even get them better. So I was really, really surprised. I didn't think it would be worth to press these. Um, that was just crazy. Now, that's the lowest one I got, guys. Now, let me show you the next lowest one. Then an earthquake happens and it all just like crashes on the floor. Why would you say something that negative? <laughs> Here, this is my next lowest. It's a 9.2. Isn't that the same one? It's, it's all the same book. It's 15 of the same book. The Creature. Oh. And then if you look closer, you can see Stevens. And they actually dated when they started. So they started working on this in 74, I guess. David Stevens, 74. 6, 8, 74. So maybe this is when they started at Comic Con. Or maybe they put it on there when they first met. I, I, I don't know. So, But that's the day. Beautiful book. And by the way, I'm going to put some of these on eBay. Like, I'm going to put half of these in my safe. A safety deposit box. And it will just be put away for the future. And then a few I'm going to sell. Actually, I showed you, show you this one right here. Because this is technically the lowest one. It's a qualified grade. 9.8. Oh white pages. And it's because it's autographed on the back. I didn't see that. Hmm. Which is kind of cool because it's actually an autographed copy from Carl Taylor. I mean, he's not super famous. But if you were in the comic book industry, you actually know who he was. He actually was featured in another comic book um, of a really famous artist that put him in the comic books. So that's so that was 9-2. So let me show you the next one. So I have 1, 2. Oh, here's another one. So we move up. So here we have a 9.4. And these are uh, just all white pages. I mean, they were so stuck together. I mean, in a, and if you watched the video, I'm going to put the link in the box that we found them. You would have never thought these would come out like this. Then we have one. Hold on, Paul Mart. Wasn't it that box that had like all the comic books just like glued together? It was like really no, bad? This was a different box. This was a box that just had paperwork. It had notes, store notes. <laughs> And um, it had some, there's actually some other fan signed books that I need to find again. I don't know where I put them. There's somewhere in that box probably. And then I looked those up and they were going for several hundred dollars a piece. Now, I don't think these books are worth 5000 a piece, by the way. And mine is a lot better. But I will put these on the eBay and we'll see what the market decides. Here's the creature. Again, 9.6. And I have three copies of this one at 9.6. So out of the 15 books, we have... One at 9.8 qualified, two, uh, a 185, 192, 194, 396s. And uh, this is totally unbelievable to me. I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight books at a 9.8. Oh my gosh. Now I'm probably only going to sell three of these. Um,. The rest I will probably just put away and see see what it does. Um, they're super rare. Like I said, until I found Tillis, until I broke this story, most people didn't even know this existed. So it's just so long ago before comic was super, super mainstream. And since it's a fan sign, um, it just didn't, it just, it's just not as well known. Um, the first YouTube video, like I said, one guy did put one up on eBay. But see, that's, that's, see, people always ask me what's fun. Like, like, yeah, it's cool if you find a Batman number two, but everybody knows about that. To me, discovering new pieces of history and remaking something alive or re, um, rebirthing somebody and contributing to history, that's like fun to me. I love it. I love researching. I mean, it took me like a while to get a hold of this guy and uh, do the research and kind of figure it all out and put it all together. And there were some people on the CGC board that helped me. 
And you know, that's what I do a lot of times, work until two or three o'clock in the morning researching, getting to know what, what it is. But I'm gonna go edit this video right now. I'm gonna take pictures of some of these and I'm gonna put some on eBay too, so they're available. And you guys go ahead and make offers and we'll see where they go, see what the market holds. I'm in no hurry to sell these, obviously, I'm pretty sure. I mean, I actually looked on CGC. I have the only five graded books of these and um, that's just not available. So nobody has any for sale. I, I looked at every comic book website, they're just not available. But now, now that you know what that book is, this is a book you still might find somewhere, a dollar bin somewhere if you're lucky. But like I said, this was basically in Southern California. And the guy that just comes from the comic book Horta House and he was friends with Carl Taylor. And that's why he had a stack of them. So, um, you know, just lucky that comic book Horta House just keeps on giving and giving and giving. I just found 26 Gilligan Islands wax wrappers. Uh, I already sold some for 150 bucks a piece. So that's just a great house. But I'm going to put this online right now. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you want me to do more comic book videos or um, you want me to share more stuff like this. Give a thumbs up, leave a comment, and we'll go from there. And then you support the channel, which is always great. So it looks like we'll have five different auctions listed. Actually, nope, six different auctions. So, and I'm gonna do the breakdown online too of what I have. Um, and like I said, for the young guys out there, you know, a lot of people do stuff like, they'll find 15 of these, and they won't tell people that they have 15. They'll, they'll only put out, you know, one bulk and try to pretend that's all they have, so. It's really bad. If you want to do good business and you want to be in any kind of hobby, it's the same for anything. If you find 20 of something, say you have 20 and I price what you want. You know, you still, especially like I got the control of this kind of, you still can price it at what you want to price it at. But be honest about it because a customer might be your customer for the next 20 or 30 years. So if you treat your customer right, they'll keep on coming back. Now, somebody might not agree with what you're asking, but at least he has all information and he can make the best decision that he wants. So that's it. You know, and just like anything else, you know, first when you have, if they start selling fast, as the books become less available, the price goes up like anything else. So anyway, thank you for watching. Subscribe and hit that like button.